Welcome to the last section of this course. In the previous sections, you got what you need to quickly start developing database-driven applications using Entity Framework Core. This section will take you one step further and introduce some more advanced concepts surrounding EF Core. After completing this section, you will be ready for more advanced courses on ORMs, design patterns, and Entity Framework. Let's see what we will be covering in this section. We will begin by seeding the database. We will then move on to a very important topic, database transactions. We will look at raw SQL queries, how to handle concurrency conflicts, and finally, we will start a new project with an already existing database and check an alternative to the code-first approach that Entity Framework Core has to offer. Let's begin by looking at what seeding is and how to do it. In this video, you will learn what database seeding is, why you may want to seed your database, and of course, how to seed it using EF Core. Database seeding is the process of pre-filling the database with data not coming from the user. It's fairly common in most ORMs and was present in Entity Framework 6, the previous version of the Entity Framework, but in EF Core, it is not directly supported by the API as of now. That does not mean it cannot be done though, you just have to use the correct approach. Let's take a look at the reasons why you may want to seed your database. Firstly, if you're running integration tests and you want to test your application as a whole, as opposed to just unit testing individual parts, then faking data through a service or a repository is not enough especially if you want to test your persistence layer, then you will have to fill it with data. But seeding not only is needed for testing, it's fairly common that database-driven applications have some form of pre-filled data. Say, for example, that you are creating an application for your local university to manage students. You would probably have a department table where you store all of the university's departments so you can use their primary keys to match them with their students. This is not something that will be inserted by the user. It's information that needs to pre-exist in the database. Similarly, in a music application, you may want to fill in the different music genres in a gender table. Those are usually operations that only happen once during the initialization of the database, much like migrations. Let's come back to our bookstore application and attempt to seed the database with authors and books. The first step in the process is to create an extension method for the DB context. You could always define that method in the DB context itself, but it's kind of a better practice to, to use an extension method. So I created a new class, the app DB context extensions class. This class has to be static since we are defining an extension method. Also, the extension method itself should be static. Let's call that ensure database seeded. And of course, don't forget the this keyword as the first argument to define that this method is an extension method for the appdb context class. One more thing that we're going to need is the models namespace because we're going to access the authors model and the book model. So we may begin. The first thing we want to do is insert authors in the database, but only if the database table for the authors is empty. To do that, we use the any method and we will use the exclamation mark to so that we only insert authors if there aren't any authors already in the table. Let's go with the add range method. So we need to add uh, an array or a list of authors or something like that. And within it, I'm going to prepare two authors, the same two authors that we used throughout the previous videos. And there they are, our new authors. Now, uh, let's save those changes. We're not done yet. We will add a few books later, but we need to save the authors so that we can take their primary keys. What I mean by that is that if the database doesn't have any books 
which means we need to to prefill it with a few books we will need to have the author ID for every book that we want to insert so after saving the above authors or in case they've already been saved we're going to retrieve them from the database using the single or default method so let me get the first author by first and last name of course and then I I'm going to copy the above row and I'm going to change that to author 2 and since they have the same last name I only need to change the first name now we are ready to insert the books that come from these two authors so context.books.addRange and we initialize a new book array and within that let's have a first book the author ID will be set to the ID of the first author author 1 we shall have a unique ISBN I'm doing this for short, just six ones, and the book will be called book one. Just like that, zero imagination, fake data. And let me create a second book too, this time from the second author, from author two. So again, we need to set the author ID. To author 2.id and ISBN since this is the second book I'm gonna go with six twos and call the book book 2 of course we shouldn't forget to save the changes now I'm going to visit the SQL Server Object Explorer and I'm going to open the authors table as well as the books table so that we can have them at the ready and uh, check them immediately after setting the database and we're ready for the next step which is of course to go to the startup class for the final step in this process we need to go to the configure method of the startup class and get an instance of our DB context so that we can ensure that all migrations have been applied and set the database to do that we're going to go with app.application-service-get-required-service and we're going to provide the iService-scope-factory interface. This interface is simply a class that is responsible for creating scopes in your application and by scope we mean an entire inversion of control container that will have implementations of all the services that you have supplied it with including the DB context so we can use the service provider just like this to get an instance of the app DB context the next step would be to first ensure that everything in the database has been migrated so the database is updated with the latest migration available and immediately after that we're ready to call our own extension method the ensure database seeded method and run the application so that we can see if if it worked remember that we do not have to visit any routes just the initialization is enough once the app has been initialized the configure method in the startup class has been called so if we refresh this table starting from the authors table we see that we do have the two authors that we seeded and the two books as well 